Well, hello, Built the Lodas, and welcome back to the channel. It's Expanse Day, so this is going to be short and sweet. The Expanse, Season 2, Episode 11, Here There Be Dragons. If you could do me a favor, friends, hit that like button, smash that subscribe, ring that bell for notifications. You'll be alerted next time we go live on YouTube with The Expanse or any of our sci-fi offerings. And if you'd like anything that we do early or in its full-length format, the link to the Patreons in the description. Of course, you can always stay here on YouTube memberships. You get everything about a day early and you get any bonus episodes for The Expanse like our case files. But friends, all that is then and this is now. And now, thank God, it's time to watch some Expanse as we delve into season two, episode 11, Here There Be Dragons. Prepare to engage maximum warp reaction. And away we go. Such a joy. I am going to be a hurting pup when this is over. But I've come to realize, too, something in watching and reacting to things where I used to, like, really kind of dread the ending of something that I like a bunch. Now I'm it's more of the journey. If that sounds as stupid as that sounds, it's it's I'm really starting to appreciate every aspect of watching and loving something. And I think it's because I'm taking my time. I think that if I binge this, that I probably would kind of get into that, you know, oh no, it's almost over. With this, I just get to love it as long as I can. Oh, back to Ganymede. Station is dead, according to Meng, but they don't know it. Oh, before the mirrors fell. I spy goldenrod. Solid go. Cornflower? Centuria. <gasps> okay, so you learned a lot from your father. Strickland seems like a nice dude. I'm sure he's super evil. Today's gonna be a very exciting day. Oh my god. This is it. I went through here. God, what a difference a couple days make. Or however long it's been. Chicken boy to give us a skeleton key. I'm pretty sure it wasn't out of the goodness of his heart. He didn't want to get beaten to death with a can of chicken. Amos and Holden getting along is kind of off-putting to me. I've been from bashing that kid's head in. Well, you've taught me a lot about futility. <laughs> nah. I think I just beat you to it. Ooh. If we can prevent it from doing something worse, I don't mind bashing some assholes head in. That's music to Amos's ears because if he thinks he's anything like Holden, that'll make him feel better about. This leads to the old station. Boy, Amos is a big guy. I say that all the time. Most of the original foundation tunnels were abandoned decades ago. No one lives there. But it doesn't mean they can't. Or they can't do anything else down there, or... In case we, In case we don't find her? Look, you haven't lost a child. Yes, I have. <sighs> My baby boy was taken from me. And I tried, and I tried to find him, and I failed. It took me a very long time to understand that it wasn't my fault. Oh my god. This is not my time to stop. That's who, that's who she wanted Fred, uh, uh, she wanted Fred Johnson to find. Shared your heir, saved his life. What happened to that girl who knew her duty? She was pressed by an asshole. Her who... fire team got killed by a thing on Ganymede that wasn't wearing a back suit. That's right. I just want to help. You were told what you needed to know, and you've helped quite enough already. Then I resign my commission. Transport's on its way. It'll be here in a few hours. You make sure her bags are packed. Dismissed. Dismissed? This is my room, You asshole. lied to me about Ganymede. You all lied about Travis. You've been lying to me this whole time. That's what's bothering you. That's what's bothering you? Yeah, the fucking truth, dude. You may have jeopardized the future of Mars, but all you can think about is your peace of mind. Oh, this gaslighting horse shit, man. Earth's fleet was ready and waiting to attack us, to destroy us, to destroy everything that we had worked so hard to build. And that's supposed to justify- Grow up! Fuck you. Peace of mind is a luxury that no Martian can afford, especially not a Marine. Apparently you can't afford honor either. I have to worry about that much longer. 
Well, then in that case, fuck you and let me. What's that supposed to mean? You won't be going back to parade, Bobby, because you don't follow orders. And a soldier follows orders. You're not a soldier anymore. Dismissed. Oh, I thought they were in her room. We knew that, though. We knew that. All indicators green. We're good to go. Okay, we're back to Venus. Oh, shit. Launch two. Launching two. Ah, oh, shot him right by it. Here we go. So I'm curious. I wonder, the other planets in the solar system, are they of an agreement that the Martians and... And they're both no, gone. they're gone. God damn it. Well, that makes six. Are the Martians and the Earthers like split the rest of the planets? What if we cannibalize the shielding from one to reinforce the other? Lower orbit, drop the probe from there, reduce the time of flight to surface. I bet that gets the job done. It would also break mission protocols. Do you think if Magellan followed protocols, he would have circumnavigated the world? He didn't make it all the way around. He died trying. He met giants in Patagonia, mate. Hmm. We're in uncharted waters. It's worth the risk. Here there be monsters. You know what sailors used to say when their ships went past the end of their maps? Time for a new map. Here there be dragons. Have I been saying here there be monsters the whole time? I probably have been. I think I found a way to get to Jules Piramel. That's good. His whole family's reeling under the financial pressure we've put on them, and I think his eldest daughter, Clarissa, is ready to crack. You Clarissa. And if we make an amnesty offer through her, she may be able to sell him on it. He did his part. I got a tip from a friend in the Security Council. When the Eris incident hearings are convened, they're going to make you the star of the show. You only have a few, only a short time to make it right, Aaron Wright. My good friend, Jules Piermel. If he's not here to pay for his crimes, they're going to take it out on me. Yeah. You need to use these hearings to tell them everything. Tell them yourself. Atone for your sins. You'll get through this. No, he won't. Yeah, I will. One way or another. Ooh. I don't want to say that sounds suicidal. That's what it sounded like. Like he's made his mind out to do as much as he can, and then whenever rubber meets the road, he's gonna... Oh, Bobby, did you cut out again? Did they reuse that shot? Oh, she's remembering. Okay, okay. Bobby, you can ask for amnesty. Right? I don't know what that would do. All clear. Three. Man, I really want to know Bobby's actor's height. What's happening? What is happening? Apparently they got wind of an OPA block to bomb your transport. All traffic in or out of this airspace has been restricted until further notice. Who sent the notification? It came directly from Undersecretary Avicerella's office, sir. That's ah. a fact. That's a fact. So, no fly zone. Man. We're in no fly zone. Looks like a freaking hornet's nest. Wow. All right, sweetheart, show me the MCR in no fly zone. Wow. So no one goes in and no one comes out. You're already in though, right? Because the moons? Can't risk the broadcast gonna give up our location, but God damn it, we gotta get a message down to them somehow. Probe, secondary source of transmission. All vessels into Jupiter AO. Incoming MCRN Delta 2735. The Karakum is clear to dock on Ganymede. Karakum. Well, well, well. That'll make you so gosh darn special. Coming from Venus. Where the hell are they gonna dock? Way the hell out in the middle of nowhere. It smells like black ops to me. Yep, they're bringing something from Venus. You're right. They're probably here for the exact same reason we are. Shit, that means I gotta get down there before they do. I love Alex. Back. Clumsy idiot. Look at you showing off, Expanse. Look at you showing off. Look at you showing off, Expanse. I love it. I said why? They're showing the whole goddamn system. Okay. What 
are we looking at? Now show me the orbital pass of all the Jovian moons. <laughs> That's a lot. What are you looking at, Alex? It's times 10. Spin them. Plot a gravity assist trajectory down to Ganymede. No engine, just thrusters. Oh my God, you're gonna do what the, uh, uh, what's his name was doing? Oh, what's that stuff called? Oh shit. Saddle up. Slingshot. Slingshot, slingshot racing. Oh my God, here we go. Okay, so this is back when it happened. Trigger happy idiots in orbit. Uh, everybody knew that a field test might cause collateral damage. Not like this. Collateral damage? A butterfly will squeeze its way out of there soon. When I was a little boy, I was about your age. I saw one trying to get out. So I tried to help. Really carefully, I split open the casing. And the butterfly came right out. But it couldn't fly. It was supposed to struggle. Squeezing its way out of that tight casing pushed fluid from its fat body into its wings. Okay. Don't you want to be able to fly one day? I'm scared. Yeah, he's got her. Oh, shit. And that way is the unknown. This guy's way too into this. Yeah, there might be scary stuff, but there might also be... He's a very good actor, too. And we may learn the secrets of the universe. And there you go. Come on, sweetheart. There's nothing to be afraid of. Except me. Everything. The medicine I just gave you. This woman standing behind me. Ah, oh, same spot. Oh my god, they're doing a great job with this. I'm so floored by Naomi's baby boy. Alex knows the backup plan. He'll come down as soon as we call. <laughs> Alex is making an audible. Wait, look. the casing, May's medicine. This is May's medicine. She needs a dose every day. Strickland's keeping her alive. We're on the right track. Yeah. For good or bad. Hey! Don't! Terrible, terrible idea if you draw on these two. You boys ripping wire? We need it. This will buy us passage off this ice ball. Then go. Yeah, get going. The cascade, huh? Looks like the word's out. Yeah, calling it an ice ball is probably... Oh, Bobby. What are you gonna do here? Hello, oh, you're in a world of shit, but Christian needs you here. I need to speak to Captain Martins. Captain Martins is in his asshole meeting. Come. Oh, look at this asshole. He told you that story? About the climbing accident? He was proud of you. So I guess the two of you weren't that close, huh? Because that's not the story. He didn't tell you the real story. There wasn't an accident? No, there was, but I was the one who fell. He carried me on his back. You know, I used to think he told that story to make me look good. But now I think it was more for him. I want to know what really happened on Ganymede. Ooh. And you're going to tell me or I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. Yeah. Here we go. What happened to my team? You got a firing squad for this. Uh, they're not in this room, are they? Is the firing squad here? The whole generation has forgotten what it means to sacrifice for the dream of Mars. Oh, then let's, why don't you start with a little sacrificing here? What killed my team? <laughs> Yeah, keep him. Don't let him go. Activate. Project Caliban. Show the field test. Oh yeah, you're a real, real hero. You gave this up after three punches. The drone you were watching. The hybrid covered more than two kilometers on the ground. You watched that thing slaughter my team. We were a goddamn sales demo. Did you get a good deal? Put it in order. It was for the good of Mars. Fuck you. Yeah, you're a real tough guy. You look at the soldier laying out on the couch there. 
Captain Martins needs to see you. Hey, what's up, buddy? <coughs> Bobby? You do not want to trifle with Roberta. Fantastic job. Get that information off of that pad as soon as you can. You don't know if he's got some type of, you know, fail safe, you know, doomsday, erase it type shit. Immediately to Chris Jen. She's the only one that can protect you here on Earth. You're going to be an enemy of Mars, but they're going to put everything on you. Everything on her. Whatever they can, they're going to put on her. I wouldn't be surprised if they said she killed her whole team. All kinds of horse shit. She was an Earth spy. That's her! Stop! Stop her with shit! Hello! We're not authorized! Head towards the line. Hurry! Oh, that's a direct order! You're not on Martian soil anymore. Soil. I am going oh, inside to Roberta Draper, Martian fire. Marine Corps. I am requesting political asylum on Earth. Yes, you have to. Nice job, Bobby. Oh, you show off. You show off, Alex. You badass, you. See how he's moving in the seat? That's the shit I do when I play video games. If you haven't guessed, I don't like sitting down. <laughs> I like to be standing. My man. Get that speed, get that speed. Ooh, oh, oh. Silent as the night and smooth as silk. Viola. I think you're doing all the hard work. Uh-oh, I don't like that look. What's the matter? That is a sight to behold. Oh, good. Seeing the universe through Alex's eyes is one of my favorite things about this show. Uh oh. Switch the manual. Give me thrusters. Did they see you? Shit. Out of the way. Out of the way. Out of the way. Did they see you? <sighs> God damn. Nice job, Alex. How about I take your hand from here? My man doing all that with like a track pad. <laughs> oh, wow. What the fuck are you looking at? I'm entirely sure. Huh. Sergeant Draper, when I said I need your help, I didn't mean create a diplomatic incident. Then you should have been more specific. <laughs> you have to appreciate that, Christian. It was a weapons test. Me and my team and your Marines too, we were caught in the middle. That test nearly triggered a system-wide war. The weapon's up for sale and Mars wants it. Badly. The peace talks, they were a delaying action to buy time. To complete the terms of the contract. Do you know who is involved? Bruno Jen. I took that off Captain Martins. He's in on it for sure. And I bet Minister Korshinov is too. Korshinov. Are you up for a debriefing? We'll try to keep it short. You have nothing but... This is a brave thing you have done today. It's the only thing she could do. You don't have to call me sergeant, ma'am. I'm not a soldier anymore. Her son was a soldier, wasn't he? Really? Slow down. I'll take the door. Amos doesn't ask questions, like... Give me a gun. You shoot your kid. You gotta be real careful. Do you know how to use one? No, but I'm ready to fight for my daughter. You just easily shoot her. This is fire, okay? Don't shoot us. Don't shoot anything, dude, unless you have to. <laughs> well, hey, everybody. What the fuck's going on here? Amos disarm these people. That's not going to happen. Don't be stupid. Why don't you put down those guns? And let's talk this out before things get ugly. Oh, God. Hey. 
Yep, take him out. Oh, they sprayed. He hit somebody. Hold still. I'll fix you up. Oh, no, man. I can't say I wouldn't have done the exact same thing. It went straight through. I'm sure he feels very lucky. How come I'm the one who always gets shot? You're the biggest target, buddy. <laughs> That's the good and bad of being Amos Burton. You're the biggest fucker on the field, man. Oh, God. Madam, you and I are fortunate to spend our lives in positions of great privilege and power. Uh huh. I also believe that you understand what the proto molecule is and what it represents for humanity. What's that? If you truly have the best interests of Earth at heart, you will meet with me, and we will come to an accommodation. These are my conditions, and they are non-negotiable. <laughs> we meet in person, on a ship of my choosing, outside you in control. You will come with a limited escort. Don't refuse this offer. It won't be repeated. T fuck this guy. What do you think? What do you think? Terrible idea. Why do you pretend that you care about my opinion? Right. Indulge me. That's a fucking trap. Yeah. Predictable. And so are you. Yep. All right, fine. It makes no sense that it's a trap, which is exactly why it has to be one. What does he need from you, Chris Jen, that he can't get from Aaron Wright anymore? You're going to accept. I already did an hour ago. Jesus, Chris Jen, too brave for your own good. Too bold, maybe. I, maybe brave's the wrong word there. Too, I don't want to say arrogant, but mm, prideful, maybe? Trying to be nice, but... Cordiar is the one that could tell you you need to be able to get his opinion on shit like this. All the kids he's been infecting because he is a monster. Oh, God. Don't open it, dude. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's not me. I don't know who it is. That's the bright molecule. Don't touch it. They released it on Eros uncontrolled to see what it would do. They did this for a purpose. Yep. They're trying to create stuff. Maybe another one of those Project Caliban monsters. Hybrids. Whatever the hell they are. Part human, part proto-molecule. The scariest part about this is Protogen and Mao are making headway. Grenade! Holy shit! <laughs> Motherfucking Amos Burton, everybody. I thought he was gonna throw himself on it. Oh my god. He's too smart for that, though. There's a breach. Right, that's what that means. Atmo being pulled out. Let's wait here. No chance. Yeah, no. <laughs> that's what I'm gonna say. No fucking way, man. Uh, uh. Oh my god, I thought they were gonna end the episode. For what it's worth, you are all about ready to see a uh, historic flip out. So much for that uh, double armor on the probe as it's ripping off like it's Serenity going into Atmo. Okay, we're in. Oh, everybody, everybody's friends now that that worked. Holy shit, look at the ground. Look at the ground. What are those spires? The hell was that? You gotta pull that back up and enhance that shit. Ooh, is this the best idea? Okay, well this is strong Resident Evil vibes. We have what looks to be something that housed something. 
and now it looks like it's been broken from the inside. It might be time to run. Especially with the uh, absolutely gore-ridden bodies that are laying around here. You know, Amos is a tough guy, but that's a shoulder wound. And he's obviously not able to use his shoulder here. No. I think something broke out of this. Oh, boy. This is anesthetic gas. Oh, Jesus. I got a data core. Okay. Got a core. That'll come back into play. The alarm we heard was a depressurization alert. The inner door closed automatically when the outer was breached. Something ran out. Something tore the shit out of this airlock. And ran out. Oh, hey, Miss Pizza. Got any clever stuff? Answer me! Wait. Please. Like you help that kid in the incinerator? Or anyone on Eros? Oh, Holden. Oh, Holden. What was it? You used a protomolecule on children. What were you doing here? If she's dead, she can't tell you anything. We made it in our own image. There's a lot more where she came from. Hell. Have fun in hell. I don't hate that Holden didn't help. I hate that Holden had to choose not to help. Does it make sense? This person doesn't deserve this. Doesn't deserve help. Oh shit. Alex? Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on there, buddy. <laughs> Fucking Alex, man. That's me, brother. Alex, I'd kiss you in the mouth right now. <laughs> so could I. How come you're always the one getting shot? <laughs> How the hell did you find us? MCRM, they set up a no-fly, but they cleared a black op ship to land right here, so we got to figure in. We? Uh, so then the Rossi and I, we, we... We? You're spending too much time alone on the ship, Alex. I just decided to come on down and rescue y'all. Ah, perfect timing, brother. This place is going tits up. Alex? Stand by, we're gonna suit up and come out. Roger that. Jim, I'm not going with you. No, 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 no. If the proto molecule was here, it could be in 50 other places by now, too. Then we're just gonna have to find all of them. We have to do good where we can, when we can. What are you proposing? I'm going back to make sure there's some ambulance is up and running. And I'm gonna help Melissa get as many people off this station as we can before it dies. Oh my god. I wanted to believe we could stop this. We can't. She's right, it's grown beyond you. I don't like this. This this seems This does not seem temporary. Take Amos with you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good to go. <sighs> yeah, he seems good to go. Prax. Go with the No, I'm going with you. Okay. Thank you. You're trying, Amos. You really are trying, buddy. I don't like this. I don't like the music. It makes it sound like this is not a day or two. I don't like the sound of this at all. Chief, I think you best come take a look at this. Oh my God. It sure as hell seems like it's looking at us. Mother of God, that thing ain't got a vaccine. Oh my God. What the hell is that thing, Holden? Suit up. I'm going on a hunt. You're out of your mind, Holden. Ah, uh, that son of a bitch. Oh boy, oh boy, this show. I love it. I hate it. I love to hate it. The endings. I hate the endings. All right, my friends, we just got done watching The Expanse Season 2, Episode 11. Here, there be dragons. And the only thing left to do is to talk about it. All right, friends, we just got done watching The Expanse Season 2, Episode 11. Here, there be dragons. Oh, my word. Oh, my word. Okay. So we've got a lot of resolution to a couple of our, our plot lines here, most notably Bobby. Um, it was speculated, actually, in the last uh, episode, what was the um, Cascade? The last episode in Cascade, whenever she was kind of forced with, you know, 
Martins was like giving her, you know, the grief and all this nonsense, you know, the gaslighting that apparently uh, he thinks is somehow going to work, you know, you know, just by brute force or intimidation. I don't know. I'm not really sure if Martins knows what he looks like and what Bobby looks like, because the fact that he was trying to intimidate her is laughable. I mean, it's it's and, and again, not just because he's her, her superior, you know, you have to assume it. His thinking that he could intimidate her, it goes beyond the physical. It goes towards the the mental. And it's basically assuming that Bobby is brainless, that Bobby will just continue to not question any orders, will continue to just accept her fate, you know. And so that type of intimidation and the point that he thought it would work from, his, his uh, base understanding of who Bobby was, was horrifically flawed. And it shows his arrogance to think that just by being, you know, stern and an asshole, that she'd just fall in line. I love the resolution to that in this episode when she beats the shit out of him. Um, I would have preferred uh, m more beating. <laughs> I hate to say that. You know, I'm starting to, to go into a descent like Holden here, but um, this guy took everything from her and, you know, it took, I mean, when I mean everything, I'm not just talking about her, her service record in the Corps being tarnished and her ability to be a Marine being tarnished. He took Mars from her, you know? She has had to now ask for asylum on Earth, you know, completely foregoing her planet, her family, her duty, her creed, everything that we've seen and been established as Bobby's like baseline tenets, her honor, her duty, everything that she kind of holds dearest to her, this asshole just took from her. And again, I mean, she had, she could, she played the only hand she had. If she had gotten back to, if been taken back to Mars, I mean, it, she probably would have been incarcerated they, or killed, you know, the, whatever would have been the easiest way to kind of tie off that loose end. And her death was probably easily, if it wasn't already determined to happen, it was on the table. You know what I mean? They probably couldn't have done it on earth. The trip back to Mars, once they got to Mars, nobody would have heard of Roberta again. And so I'm very, very glad that she was able to do this great overhead shot, too, of when they're running past the Martian demarcation line on their embassy into the UN line. Really, really great stuff. Liked it very much. And I really liked the uh, exchange between her and Christian. You know, she did a great, I, I, I too, Martin's like, you know, oh, you're not a soldier, you know, big tough guy. And then, of course, he folds after three punches, you know, there, there, Project Caliban, everything I know, you know, okay, all right, tough guy, you know, uh, just the best. I love when when uh, people like his character are revealed for who they truly are. Um, I like it for the revelation for the audience, and I also like it for the revelation for the character themselves. So... After that, Martin's knows, well, I just folded and gave her all the information. I've got to live with the, my own cowardice. Whether or not he actually accepts it or sees it like that is another thing. But um, I like the idea that he, just like a human being uh, uh, in reality, a character, you know, they might convince themselves in the daylight hours that, you know, they were in the right and they had to save their lives and excuse, excuse, excuse. But when head hits pillow at night, and I shut, and you've got that moment of self-revelation, there's no way Martins doesn't think, coward. And I love that shit. I like, that's my head cannon. That's how shit works. You know, that's how I see it going. I mean, I'm going to say this too. That separation between the two, you know, groups, Alex and Holden and Meng, and then Amos and Naomi going off to go in the somnambulist, that seemed, that separation... That goodbye seemed way longer than something that's going to be temporary, way longer than a few days. I know that this, this is, I mean, think about basically anything that we've ever seen. Whenever you have an ensemble or a crew like this, you know, at some point they have to go their separate ways, get, you know, more information revealed, different dynamics form, yada, yada, yada. People grow apart, people grow closer. You know, all those things happen. We've seen it a lot in science fiction. You know, you see, I mean... Flash Gordon, Flash gets taken away from Dale and Zarkov, you know, in Star Wars. Luke gets taken away from Han and Leia. You know, it's that separation is the way that the story continues and grows. And I understand that. But I'm just not, 
I, I personally, I'm selfish. I want to see them together. You know, I, I love the dynamic that this group has. And I feel like we just started with them. And excuse me, again, I might be wrong about, um, you know, this separation being longer than just a temporary thing. But um, if it's not, you know, I'm always going to go default to putting all my chips in and trusting the writers to do what's best. I'm just very curious to see how this plays out because, um, you know, I mean, it's a good way to introduce other characters too. You know, if two groups kind of fold in different people and, and bring new people in, that that's a way to, you know, maybe bring in a Bobby. Like we were kind of I was speculating before that, you know, Bobby might be uh, somebody that could join the crew potentially, which I thought Juliet was going to do that. And that didn't happen. So um, I guess we'll have to see. So we've got numerous things that are happening here. You know, back in season one, we had the Anubis, you know, this mystery black ops ship that we knew had something to do with everything that was going on. Now we have the Karakum, which is, you know, coming in as this black ops ships, you know, from Venus coming into uh, Ganymede Station where they apparently have this, not necessarily developed, but that's, you know, working lab where they're making these I'm going with hybrids just because, you know, like we speculated way early on, uh, the proto molecule could rebuild somebody and they maintain themselves as being human. That was a possibility. The proto molecule could take the biomass and create it into something brand new that's nothing, has no human element to it. That was another possibility that we kind of speculated. And then the, the one that we kind of settled on was what if the proto molecule breaks down the human and rebuilds them so they're like human plus proto molecule. I think that's what we're seeing right now. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and speculate on this though. This hybrid that they are creating here, this hybrid seems engineered by protogen. I'm assuming this is protogen, Mao's group. Um, you know, they, we remade it in our own image. Okay, all right. So you didn't let the proto molecule, the proto molecule do its own thing. You know, we saw what the proto molecule did to Julie. You know, we saw that she was kind of coming back as Julie, you know, growing back and, you know, and she couldn't feel her extremities still, but she certainly looked like she was at the very least in a pretty authentic humanoid form. You know, this stuff doesn't look like that. This stuff, you know, the, the brief glimpse that we saw in both, you know, the like through Gunny's visor and then also in the Project Caliban kind of sales brochure or whatever the hell it was, um, you know, yes, humanoid shaped, but nowhere near as humanoid ask as what we saw Julie. So my speculation is the proto molecule when left to do its own thing, makes something like Julie, the proto molecule when manipulated by Mao or protogen makes something like this hybrid thing we have running around. You know, and in many ways, I mean, it seems to be an incredibly powerful creature tearing through stuff. You know, they, the, the stats about how it tore through the UN troops and tore through the Martian troops, you know, that's all seems very, very good as far as like, you know, if that's what you wanted, you wanted some type of creature to just tear through shit that you can obviously somewhat control. Um, then, I mean, tip of the cap, you have apparently done that, but that's not nearly as elegant or refined as what we've seen the proto molecule do to Julie, you know, and we never got a chance to see what it would have end up doing to Aero station, you know, was it going to remake everybody. Julie was the first one that had gone down. So Julie would have presumably been the farthest along in this cocoon like butterfly rebirth type of thing. So I'm not sure what to expect here, but I, I do think that there is a, a distinct, I mean, obviously the proto molecule when not kind of influenced or not, you know, uh, limited in what it can do or, or kind of engineered by human hands, the proto molecule has a different task, a different kind of end game, a different type of process to make things. And then when it's manipulated and bastardized by Mao and protogen, presumably this is my theory, then we get the hybrid, which we've speculated on. But um, I'm going to watch that going forward. And it makes me wonder just what Julie would have been like if she had been given time to reach a hundred percent complete, you know, if the, if the, the bar at the bottom had reached a full hundred percent, what would we have seen of Julie Mao? I don't know. I guess we'll never know, but that's a really cool possibility. And it, it speaks of, you know, human hubris to think that you can do something better than the actual proto molecule. We'll see. You know, I, I we had a, a lot of other things that popped up here. Um, 
specifically Christian, you know, wanting to go out and meet Mao. I think it's a terrible idea because will she get information? Sure. Could she? You have to think of it like this. Christian, are you going to be able to influence Mao? He's acting like, you know, you're at his beck and call. So you're dealing with a person that never has had to do anything in the past. They're, they have the money, the power, every the influence. He doesn't need to listen to you, especially now. What are you going to offer him? Asylum or, or, or you know, pardon? He, I don't even think you can do that. And he knows that. And so meeting with him, other than just, you know, satiating your own curiosity is not really going to help. And Cordillard was right. I mean, you know, he can't see where it would be a beneficial trap. And that's why he believes it to be a trap. And I think that that thought line is exactly right. I think Christian is not necessarily getting arrogant, but she has made successes, you know, uh, uh, at least politically made successes. And now she's She's had a string of them together and not necessarily that she doesn't think she can do any wrong, but, you know, success begets success. And I think she's thinking that she can continue to make advancements and things like that by this meeting. And I'm not, this might be one of her first mistakes. We'll have to see. I, my money's always with Christian, but I don't like this setup. And I'll end with this. Um, Naomi had a baby boy taken from her. We knew that she was looking for somebody. We knew it because she needed Fred Johnson. You know, one day I'll ask you to help me find somebody, you know, a favor, favor for a favor. And, um, you know, we never got to figure out who that person was, but, you know, we speculated on it. And again, a child, I mean, this is, this is a whole different level now. Um, and so now we have to look at Naomi much differently because uh, not necessarily, you know, at her core, is she different, but she's also now we have to add mother on top of it. And the distinction and title of mother, especially one that, you know, obviously is looking for her child, uh, you know, desperately, it seems, you know, or had tried to and then failed and had to come to the, live with that, now has that hope of potentially finding the child again, you know, seeing uh, the doctor go through that stuff with May, you know, has to kind of, stoke those flames and whatnot. Um, I'm not saying that that makes her any more like, different than what we know. She's not a new Naomi or somebody that we should view differently. Um, it's just her motivations have changed substantially. So now we get to look at her and say, okay, you know, we can understand maybe some of these motivations, some of these lies, some of these manipulations that she has used in the past, like keeping the proto molecule sample, things like that. We have to look at them now with a broader context that we're dealing with somebody who, you know, desperately has a lot more going on than maybe the surface dictates. But my friends, this show is just getting better and better and spinning up more and more. And we've got a, a whole planet in Venus that is soon going to be proto molecule. And I don't care what anybody says, Venus belongs to the proto molecule now. And it's just a matter of observing it and seeing what it does. And I guess stopping it when it decides that Venus isn't enough. But my friends, if you could do me a favor, hit that like button, smash that subscribe, ringy, ding, ding, that bell for notifications, and you'll be alerted next time we go live with The Expanse or any of our sci-fi offerings. And of course, if you'd like anything we do early or in its full-length format, the link to the Patreon is in the description. But my friends, all that is then and this is now, and now it's time to say goodbye. And where should we say goodbye from? Well... Since we can be observers that see any and all that go on here, in, uh, goes on in the expanse, I say we say goodbye from a destroyed laboratory where a lot of uh, would-be godlike scientists are getting colder and not older, and we witness the separation of Naomi and Amos from Holden, Alex, and the doctor. And we have to think to ourselves, at least I do, how long are they going to be apart? What's going to happen to both groups while they're separated? Only time will tell, my friends. Until next time, Vulcan Roll, and I'll see you.